just house. We lose our dogs. We, you know, it's everything. It's all we've got. We have no other place to go. Lori and Richard paid cash for this fixer-upper five years ago, then took out a loan for repairs. With their expenses mounting, they decided to refinance their mortgage. But that's when their problems really began. The day that we went to sign the papers, actually, they said something about, which I didn't understand, about raising us three points from the previous loan. But at the time, we were sitting right there, ready to sign the papers, pen in hand, when he said it to us. Which, I signed the papers. I thought that was the thing to do. I was a little ignorant. Now Rich and Lori have a lawyer and are fighting off foreclosure. Their case is just one example of a bad situation that could have been avoided. The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia wants you to see their story and the stories of others like them so that you might avoid becoming another victim. Hi, I'm Dr. Marvin Smith of the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. It seems that every week we hear heartbreaking stories of people who've lost their homes through foreclosure. Congress and federal regulators have worked over three decades to increase the availability of credit, particularly for mortgages in underserved communities. And they've also increased rules to protect consumers from unscrupulous lenders and brokers. But no amount of regulation can substitute for being an informed borrower to help you, your family, Friends and neighbors, we've created this video so that you can avoid the mistakes others have made. They all found out the hard way that when you borrow money, using your home as collateral, it can be very painful. Particularly if you don't really understand all the loan terms. You'll want to listen carefully to these stories. This is where it all began. With the ceiling, having that done, and then the railings was included and this steel door. Veronica owned her home, but she needed some simple repairs that should have cost a few thousand dollars. What she got was debt close to $40,000. All I knew that it was getting harder and harder for me to take care of, I mean, to keep the, the bills up. I was calling different finance companies to see if I could get, you know, another loan. I had no idea of how bad things were really. It just built up from 15,000 15, uh, to 38,000, plus a balloon. Beware of balloon loans, which require a large final or balloon payment. In Veronica's case, she owed a balloon payment of $29,000 at the end of her loan when she would be 83 years old. Plus, if she couldn't pay it, she'd lose her home and refinancing or flipping her loan, taking out another loan to replace the first one, just put her deeper in debt. And then they put me in a homeowner's insurance that I really didn't need because I, I didn't know they were doing this. What Veronica's really talking about is credit insurance. It's a policy often sold to subprime borrowers and financed in the loan. It's used to pay the debt if the borrower dies, becomes disabled, or unemployed. Brokers often push these policies because they get big commissions. Also be aware that credit insurance primarily protects the lender, not you, the borrower.